Welcome back to the Smugsy Show. I'm Smugsy, your host. Almost every Wednesday we meet here to talk about important things and important people. This week, the important news, of course, is about live golf and the PGA marriage. Important to some. Certainly important to Rory McIlroy. Poor kid. Spent the last year beating his chest about the moral high ground of the PGA only to find out that Big Daddy, Jay Monahan. He was seduced by the Saudi prince, Mohammed bin Salman. The only thing we don't know is whether it's going to be N, J, M, B, S. J, Monaghan is going to be the CEO of the new power couple. I give it less than a year. By the next presidential election, the parties will be split. You just got to wonder who's giving these people advice. Who's behind the scenes? Who's the puppet? If Michael Moore was doing a documentary on the Live Golf PGA merger, what would he find? Khashoggi's ghost? You wonder if maybe it's a chatbot that's leading the negotiation. Certainly might have been a chatbot named Tessa who gave Rory McIlroy the bad advice to die on the sword for the PGA. Do you hear about Tessa? No joke, the chat bot for the National Association of Eating Disorders apparently took a bite of the forbidden fruit, and of course I'm referring to AI, and started fat shaming the people calling in with eating disorders. It's not right. Not only that, but Instagram, okay, Instagram, where people show their arts and crafts and their puppies, and the Burgonias. Instagram is the clubhouse for pedophiles. They have a whole hashtag handbook for these perverts who need their gadgets to get off. Yeah, technology, if it doesn't make you fat, it's going to kill you. I think what the PGA, what Live Golf, what Rory McIlroy, what all the fat people who are ashamed of themselves, what you and I, what we all need to do is stop judging people by their social media feeds, by the groups that they're in, by the associations, by the teams. A golfer on Live Golf really has the same... DNA as a golfer on the PGA, and they just get paid more. You can't judge people by the teams they're on. You can't judge Democrats and Republicans all the time by which team they're on. There's plenty of Republicans who are not white supremacists, and there's plenty of Democrats who aren't rabid gender activists. There's plenty of Democrats who are consistent with the science. You know, Ralph Waldo Emerson, he was probably a Democrat. He said, consistency is the hobgoblin of small minds. Well, the hobgoblin of politics right now for Democrats is the gender-affirming care. You know, believe in science. Well, the science of gender-affirming care is that it's big pharma and a synonym to the same drug that blocks hormones, blocks puberty, right, holds back. That same drug is called chemical castration in other circles. A synonym is chemical castration. That's the science. It's a drug that was not made for gender dysphoria, but made to treat things like prostate cancer. But that drug now has the name gender-affirming care. And people are feeding it to their kids. And I don't think that's right. Just like I don't think chatbot should be fed this AI. It ruins their minds. It screws them up. Yeah, so 
dog people and cat people, it's the same thing. You can't necessarily judge a person by their pet. It's easy to fall into that kind of lazy paradigm of, oh, look, look at that pretty woman with that beautiful black lab. She must be a good person because she has such a good girl. I know. The slight exaggeration, but it's true. I, I do think I'm a better person because I am a dog person. I, I have an unconscious bias against cat people because deep down I have a hatred of cats. At least that's what I, I think. But then when I scratch the surface, I realize that not all cats are alike. And I always tend to gravitate toward the cool cats. And not all dogs are good. I should say not all dogs really deserve to be dogs. And I'm talking about the hairless dogs. I'm sorry, if you're a dog, I think you need to have hair. And I, and I'm going to work on that. I know that doesn't make me... I'm not proud of the fact that I dislike certain dogs. I'm just saying that we got to look into someone's soul, really. Look for the lines. Look for the art. Don't look for, you know, the pets, the hair, the drugs. It's, we got to stick together. We got to take our country back from these chatbots, from these golf moguls, from these gender warriors. And I, we just need to be really more like dogs. And, and until next time, this is Mugsy Girl signing off. Take care.